All right, what's going on, everybody? This is Broken Games HDR, and this is my playthrough of Sifu um, going after the Prodigal Child trophy, which is to beat the game under age 25, which is very hard, very challenging, right? So, you know, I, at first I was gonna upload this uh, gameplay and, you know, not have any commentary on it, but I thought, you know, why not actually, you know, uh, narrate over it, um, kind of make it a guide, uh, give some hints and, and, and tips uh, for anybody that might be going after this trophy or anybody that needs any help with the game. If there's anything that's not that I don't answer or talk about or address in this video, definitely write it in the comment section because, bro, I've been through this game so many times, each level so many times, dissected and learned about each enemy um, that I, I feel like I know it like the back of my hand. Right. So if there's any trouble you're having dealing with certain enemies, getting past a certain level, definitely let me know in the comment section after this. But, you know, in this video, I'm going to try to address a lot of things um, as far as like how to do this right now. Keep in mind, this is um, a playthrough uh, trying to get this trophy um, after I beat the game. Right. So that's after I unlock a bunch of the uh, a bunch of the moves from the skill tree, which is very vital when it comes to actually getting this trophy and beating this game under age 25. If you can beat this game on, you know, under age 25 um, on your like first playthrough without actually unlocking the moves first, then you're a god, right? I I'll tell you, you're way better than me because even when you have all the most important and, and useful moves unlocked, this is still very challenging, but it's a lot more manageable. And I think I might make a video also talking about like the most, uh, the best game, the best uh, moves in Sifu to unlock, uh, you know, just to make the game a lot more manageable. But um, yeah, so any questions you have, let me know in the comment section after you watch the video, if I don't address it, or if you don't, even if you don't want to sit through this whole playthrough and you just want me to answer some questions, just let me know in the comment section. Um, also follow me on Twitter. Y'all know where to find me. So. I think the there's a lot of good moves that make this game um, a lot more manageable, but in my opinion, the best move in the game is probably Duck Strike. I think that's the best move in the game, or top two, right? D duck Strike is so good because pretty much it interrupts the enemy's moves, right? Um, there's not a lot of uh, attacks that will like stop an enemy's move right in the animation duck strike is is one of them pretty much it's a move what uh what happens is he ducks and he just strikes an enemy and it stuns them right there's not a lot of moves that avoid and strike and stun the enemies duck strike is one of the moves that does that um also a, pr a really good move similar to duck strike is uh charged back fist if you Charge back fist, the enemy can't avoid it, but if they don't avoid it, then they become stunned and that leaves them um, that leaves them open for attack. But yeah, duck strike is really good for the enemies, uh, those enemies that, uh, they're usually women. I think they're, they're always women. The ones that have like the high platform shoes and they're very acrobatic, they have these long reaching attacks, right? Th those moves, those attacks, have very long um, charge up or wind up animations. So you can literally do a duck strike and interrupt it right at the beginning. And then you can follow it up with a combo, um, you know, just take them off their feet and you could just keep, it's just doing it over and over again, right? Wait, wait for them to, you know, do that charge up, just interrupt, interrupt it with duck strike, back off and then keep doing it. And you're gonna obviously see it um, in this in this video um another move that you don't have to unlock but it's extremely important is the sweet move now i had some trouble at first when i started playing the game executing the sweet move because this is like a fighting game right and with fighting game you usually use like a fight stick or at least directional buttons but in this game we have to do it with an analog stick you have to get used to executing a lot of these moves with the analog stick. And at first I thought it was like, man, this is this is not this is not it. 
but then you get used to it, right? Where you can execute it. And it was also even hard doing it in certain directions. Like, cause pretty much it's it's backward, it's, it's a backward and forward motion to actually do the move, right? But depending on where the enemy is and where your camera is facing, you also have to adjust uh, the analog stick movement to that. So sometimes it could be awkward doing it in, in certain um, certain directions. Cause you know, even people that play fighting games, some people feel more comfortable, uh, you know, being on the right side or the left side. Some things are, some people are more dominant on, on one side. So it was just a little bit awkward um, doing it uh, depending on where the enemy's at. But I'm, I pretty much do it instinctually now. And doing that sweep is extremely important um, because especially when you're fighting a crowd of enemies, you want to take uh, somebody off their feet. That means, so you have one less person that's actually attacking you, right? And you can choose to either uh, follow up with a ground attack or you can leave them on the floor. Sometimes it's better to leave them on the floor uh, because after the ground attack, as you saw, um, he will pick them, pick them right back up. So sometimes you just want to leave them on the floor and then go after uh, another enemy, right? So that just makes uh, handling crowds a lot easier. Um, also, there's a focus attack, which is uh, which is also a sweep that you can use on uh, bosses, um, you know, regular enemies. Oh, I, sh I should mention right now, of course, the final boss in the game, which is Yang, you cannot use focus attacks on him. So I think at, at the shrines, right, the shrines in the game where you can upgrade, um, you know, certain attributes, do not use the shrine on increasing focus attacks. Do not do it. It's because, because Yang is the hardest boss in the game. So there, there's no point of course, yeah, it might be useful when you're taking on the the rest of the four bosses in the in the game. But trust me, they are absolutely beatable without an increased focus bar, right? What you want is the uh, the increase to um, you want the increase to how much focus you gain by by avoiding or parrying. That's what you want. You want to max that out immediately, and that's what. That's what I max out first, as you can see. There's so there's three shrines per level. So the first in, in, in uh, the squats, that's what I went for first because that's what this game is all about. You know, that's something a lot, a lot of us had to learn is this game is about, you know, bobbing and weaving left, right, up, down, but it's mainly, you know, up, uh, up down, you really have to worry about. Um, but that's what this game was about. And, and that was a little bit jarring for a lot of us because most games, <clears throat> Don't play like that, right? Most games are about just using uh, the dodging mechanic and not necessarily a weaving mechanic like this game does. Like this game has this um, weaving mechanic similar to what Fight Night was, where you stand still and you just move up, right, uh, up, up, down, left, right. So that's the most important thing, and you got to get your timing down. Uh, you got to get your timing down with that. So that's. That's really important that you learn the timing of a lot of these moves. Uh, you really got to learn the enemies. You got to download these enemies, bro. You're, you're, and you're, and it's all, it's all going to come with muscle memory. It all comes with muscle memory. It's like, I, I remember my first, you know, stream playing the game. People thought I was struggling, but it's not necessarily struggling. You're learning the game, right? There's a, there's a, a pretty high learning curve for for this game you got to learn the enemies you got to learn um the moves you unlock and how to actually apply them in game you know and there's different variations to when you're actually using a weapon so yeah it's it's a lot to learn but i think you can learn it really fast the more you play the game because what is what did this game come out a week ago and i already have the you know obviously you know if i'm putting up this video i was able to get the prodigal son trophy um so yeah a week ago not even not even a full week what five days ago i was getting hit by every enemy and a lot of these enemies a lot of these levels you're gonna see that i make it look easy and it's far from it this is all muscle memory this is all just knowing the levels ins and out knowing you know just muscle memory reacting um so yeah that's that's what it that's what it really 
is about. And uh, yeah, I think um, it, it's funny because the, the the game has like, what? I think maybe four or five focus attacks. But honestly, the only one you need in the game is, is the one that sweeps. Everything else is not, it's, it's not that it's not useful. It's just not needed. This, it's absolutely, you know, the, the sweep is definitely the most, the most important. And, uh, okay, so I'm at the boss right now, the gardener. The gardener's easy. I mean, even your first time playing this guy, you, you know, you may die a couple times, but he's by no, he's in no way necessarily hard. And by the way, if you don't know, uh, there is a way to spare the enemies, um, actually not kill them. And that's part of uh, the trophies. You have to spare um, all five uh, bosses to get uh, the trophy for uh, each one. Obviously, I'm not doing that here. This is me just um, this is me just beating beating the bosses because sparing them and also doing this under a 25 is you know is harder because you pretty much have to play passive when you're trying to spare the. Um, uh, spare the bosses and you kind of pretty much got to break their structure only by parrying and not by attacking so obviously I I'm not doing that here but I will go after that um, on my platinum trophy run when I'm just cleaning up trophies because this was the trophy obviously that I wanted to get first because this is this is the hardest trophy in the game if you can get this everything else is is going to be a cakewalk right so now here's the thing as far as age goes right if you can make it to the sanctuary, which is the last level, at age 21 or 22, you're set. You, you, you're you set, you already have the trophy practically. I made it to the sanctuary at age 23. So essentially, I had two lives. I had two lives to use. Because to make it, to beat the game under age 25, what you really have um, is five lives. We know the death, depending on your death counter, the death counter will uh, uh, will add to your to your lives. But there's enemies throughout the game that uh, there's enemies throughout the game that reset your death counter. So, and they're usually like souped up enemies or bosses, right? If you beat like when you beat a boss in any any boss phase, like if you beat them in the first phase. And let's say you die, it actually resets. If you if you have a death counter, beating a boss's first phase resets the death count counter. And there's a bunch of enemies throughout these levels. I'm pretty sure that resets the death counter. So keeping your death counter at zero isn't actually hard. Ideally, in my head, I wanted to uh, I wanted to make it to the sanctuary at like 22. That that was my goal, but. I ran into some road, not necessarily some roadblocks. I ran into some situations where I got really close to, to doing it, getting there at 22. But I was like, you know what? I'm just going to settle for 23 and, and, and get there at 23 and see if I see if I can do it that way. And I was able to. Yeah. Right. And yeah, we'll get there. And as you can see by the length of the video, um, it's about an hour and eight minutes. But obviously, I didn't do all of these levels on my first try, right? Um, it took me several times to actually get through these levels at the age I wanted to. The squats is easy. Squats is easy. You know, I the, the squats and the club, even though I do think I, I died once here, the, the squats and the club, you can definitely get past these without dying once without dying at all, right? The museum, the museum is actually, there's actually like a, 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 a trick to, not necessarily a trick, but there's a path to getting to, uh, I think it's Kuroki, the final boss, uh, the, I mean, the, the third uh, level boss, while also getting the, the shrines, the dragon shrines, right? Because that's the thing. There's shortcuts in Sifu, of course, as people who've played know. But if you use the shortcuts on some levels, 
you also miss dragon shrines if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Um, you might you might miss out on one, I think maybe even two dragon shrines depending on uh, what what the shortcut. Like on the museum, if you go directly to the uh, if you go directly to the elevator, which takes you directly to the boss. Not all shortcuts take you directly to the boss, by the way. Um, but if you take the elevator, it'll take you directly to the boss, and then you'll only have one dragon shrine. But once again, you want these to uh, get these dragon shrines because it'll make it make the path uh, easier, right? You want these upgrades. So after I kick this chick's ass, I'm gonna uh, you're gonna see I get the what do I get? There's the uh, st yeah the structure regain and then there's focus regain. I recommend getting those two first, um, maxing those out. And then there's a very expensive upgrade, which is the parry upgrade. If you can get to the f uh, the final boss once again with like two of those upgraded, with like two notches upgrade, I think that also makes the game a lot easier. Because yeah, you'll you'll be doing a lot of weaving with Yang, but if you land a parry, it will do obviously um, some damage to his structure, so that will help. Now I went for the um the health upgrade jesus christ he just kicked me in my damn chest i went for the health upgrade in which i um i get more health um the more i uh i get more health when you take down enemies right that's i, I think it's the last thing i went for but i did go for it i, w I went for maximum structure before i uh before i i went for the health right so the most important things, as far as the shrine goes, increase your maximum structure, increase uh, your uh, your stru your structure regain and your focus regain. Most important things, top, you know, those are the three things. Then, if you can make it throughout these levels, you know, without needing um, the health uh, by beating enemies upgrade, then you're good. Then you could probably um, get like two notches on the uh, on the parry upgrade. But the parry upgrade is pretty expensive, so if you can't get it because you don't have enough uh, score or whatever it is, then I then I would say just go for health. I know I'm jumping around a, 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 a you know a lot, but I'm pretty much saying what what comes to my mind as I'm watching the game. Um, of course, um, sliding kick. I use sliding kick a lot because once again, like I said, just like. Just like the sweep, it helps get enemies on the floor and sliding kick uh, is just another move. As soon as you, you know, run in a room and there's multiple enemies, do sliding kick. That's one enemy on the floor that's now that now can't attack you. And um, or you can just once again go for uh, the ground punch. Another move that's pretty good. I wouldn't say it's an urgent thing to get at first, but it helps out in future levels is environmental mastery. That's where you can pretty much throw projectiles from your foot and enemies get hit by it a little bit more because they're not like, they're not ready for it, right? Versus you picking up, picking up an item. Um, I had to use freaking sweep there cause they were just jumping on me. Versus you picking up an item, you have it in your hand, they can, they can react to that a little bit more rather than you kicking it directly from your feet. So that move is uh, also um, pretty useful. This dude just body slammed me. One of the things people should know about these big guys, these brutes, is I thought you could only um, dodge or weave rather, um, like back to avoid those grab moves. You can you can do it back, left, right. It, it, it doesn't matter, right? The game tells you that you have to do you have to hold L1 and and press back to do it. it doesn't matter what direction you do it in. It, it's going to work either way. And when I learned that, I'm like, oh, that's 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 much easier. And yeah, learning of course the parry window and you know the the avoid window for a lot of these moves is 
you know that that just takes time and patience So these are the chicks that I was talking about. I don't even know if I used the, the duck strike here. But yeah, if you can throw that bottle at her, um, when you when you attack enemies in this game that aren't suspecting, that aren't um, aware, um, they pretty much go straight into uh, a, a, a mode where you can take them down. They're stunned and you can directly take them down if you can attack them, um, you know, before they're aware. And by the way, there's a bat. Oh, I, apparently I didn't. Okay, yeah, there's a bat right there. So when you get here, you should definitely pick up that bat because then there's going to be these three guys at the top and then there's the guys down in the arena. If you don't know, if you hold triangle it's to, instead of just pressing it when you have a, a bat in your hand, then that becomes a sweep. If you have a knife and you hold, or a machete, whatever the hell it is, and you hold square, then it becomes like a, a fury, uh, you know, a, a bunch of different attacks. And um, me, when I get hit on the ground, I like to stay on the ground because then you can do uh, the, uh, what is it called? Pretty much a, a ground sweep. You can do a sweep from the ground, the ground counter, I think it is, right? but you actually have to wait for the enemy to be uh, uh, about to attack for it to work. You can't be on the floor and just do it any time, right? If you just try to do it any time, then nothing's going to happen. You're not going to get the counter. You have to wait till the enemy actually attacks for it to work. So that if you press triangle, uh, triangle or square, and of course this game is, well, it's on, PC and PS5, you know, whatever people, I'm, I, but I'm, of course, I'm referencing the uh, controls from the uh, PS4, PS5. You are not supposed but to if you're to using this. like um, an Xbox controller on PC, you know, Don't just translate you to, to your uh, button layout. Oh, by the way. Oh yeah, so this guy is one of the guys who's who was really hard, who's really hard for me at first, but Duck Strike, once again, makes it easy. You can interrupt his moves with a, his uh, first move with a duck strike. And the key to really beating him also is you only need to dodge the last move, right? They do this this like punch, this like uh, this charged punch that does a lot of structure damage. That's the that's the move you you only need to worry about. Honestly, you can block the others and then just avoid that move and then he'll be open for an attack that's when you can do the punish that's what a lot of this game is it's just waiting for enemies to uh do an unsafe move and then it leaves it leaves them uh open for attack so yeah there's there's a lot of enemies like that where you know because i at first when i was playing i was like trying to you know dodge or weave everything you don't have to. There's some combinations you can just block, right? It's fine to just block and then when you need when you need to just dodge like the last hit because that often will leave them um, uh, leave them open for for a punish. So as you can see, I'm going for structure regain again. At least I think I'm about to. Yeah. Some other moves I like is uh, is the snap kick. The snap kick is a a lunging a lunging kick. I use it a lot when um, when there's an enemy that's kind of weak, uh, or if I'm weak and I don't want to um, you know push too hard. I want to do something that's safe. Then I'll just like keep my distance. I'll zone them and then just do a then then do this this lunging kick as like a poke. It's just it does like a little damage, and I'm and I just like keep poking at them. It's when I want to you know be safe and don't want to you know leave myself o open um, for an attack either because I'm weak or uh, the enemy may be weak and I don't want a chance getting hit. Then I'll just do the uh, then I'll just do the snap kick. It's useful uh, for that reason to keep your 
um, to keep to keep safe, but also like close the distance. Another another tip I'll give people is this may sound insignificant, but it's actually a, a big thing. You can hold L1 and still attack, right? Because I think it's a lot of our instinct to let go of L1, you know, the, the block button, and then attack. You can hold on to L1. It, 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 it sometimes it it's a little bit, you can get your wires crossed and it's a little bit confusing because of how our muscle memory works. But if you get used to it, it actually is a lot safer because, because pretty much you're doing like a smooth transition from offense to defense, uh, from, yeah, from offense right back into defense. So you can do an attack, but, but you're still holding L1. So it's, so as soon as the attack is over, you're still blocking again versus, you know, you do an attack, you, you let go of L1, you do an attack. Now you got to press L1, L1 again. And, you know, you might, you know, you might, uh, press it late and leave yourself, uh, open for an attack. And, um, it also, if you hold on to L1, it also helps you to go right back into weaving, you know, up, down, left, right, as I said, versus you having to press it again, um, and then and then go you know it's just a seamless transition so you should definitely try try that out also if you knock enemies down down steps it does uh extra damage to them and there's certain moves that you have that that can actually uh do that um i know forward 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 square is a a good move and that's that's a move you have unlocked uh, by default, that's actually a move I didn't utilize until like my, you know, until this playthrough. When I first beat the game, I barely utilize it, but it, it's it's actually really useful because especially when you need to push enemies away if they're swarming you, just like the uh, just like the sweep. If you need to get enemies off their feet or get enemies away from you, square uh, forward forward square is one of those uh, useful moves. And it also, um, if you push enemies, like, like I said, if you push enemies downstairs, it does extra damage. If you push enemies into walls, it also does uh, extra damage. And you could follow up. I like to uh, do that move, uh, hit them into a wall. I could have avoided that death. I can't believe I died right there. Really? I died right there? Can't believe I died to this chick. If I die to this chick, that that must mean. Did I die? To, did I die to Sean also? Yeah, that's definitely a, that's definitely that's definitely an, a a death I could have avoided. But yeah, I didn't think I, I think I didn't feel like restarting. But yeah, if you push um, enemies into a wall, and then uh, it's really I think it's a good combo to do a, a slide kick um, because they're pretty much stunned. And then you could do a ground pound or, you know, follow up with whatever move uh, you have. These two, I know people have a lot of issues with these two. These are the two you fight before you uh, fight Sean. So what you want to do here is the chick is easier to take down. If you can go, I would say go directly after the chick, right? Take her down first if you can. Um, and the other dude... He's similar to, he's one of those enemies that he does a low, right? See, when he does all that spinning around, that's how you know he's going to go low. So you can block the first few moves, block the first few moves, and then um, avoid, avoid the low sweep, right? And then when he's doing like those palm, palm moves, that's when you know he's going to do that like high, that high power charge palm move at the end. So that move you dodge last, you dodge the, uh, at the last second. They're not as hard as they seem. Together they can be very annoying, but individually they're not as hard as they seem. It's really just learning uh, their moves. Block the first few moves and either uh, avoid the low or you know, avoid the, uh, the late charge palm strike. 
All right, so now we have Sean. It is Sean, right? I think his name is Sean. So with him, his attack pattern is pretty simple. He does, is it, I think he does four. He usually does four attacks. One, two, three. Okay, that's three. The first move I think is usually like a, a little poke or a charge. I think it's like a poke or a shoulder charge. But his actual attack uh, string is like three hits. And you'll get a lot of focus. You'll build up a lot of focus, right? Because you're literally just avoiding everything he does. So your focus is going to build very quickly That uh, in, this, in this fight. And that's exactly why you want to... Uh, um, the first two levels, you, you want to um, build up your... Uh, Focus and structure regain, because your focus is increasing fighting, fighting him, and so is your and your structure is is also um, being reduced. Yes, one, two, three. Yeah, he did a shoulder charge, and then one, two, three. You just got to avoid those. Sometimes the last hit uh, is a little bit late. So you want to time that properly. Now this his second phase, um, it's it's a little bit more uh, unpredictable because he does this low a lot, right? And I'll I'll be honest with you, with certain enemies, I think it's like damn near impossible to predict their lows with certain ones. Not a lot of them. I think like especially when the bosses do lows, it's very hard. Like, if you can master avoid, you know, avoiding low, low attacks in this game, then you'll be a god. But the good thing about it is, if you, um, if you pretty much have ground, uh, ground counter, then, then even if you get hit low, it'll be, com you'll be completely fine. Because at least you'll have a chance to do, to do damage. See, every time, even though I'm, I'm not block, I'm not avoiding the low very well, every, every time he hits me on the ground, I do the ground counter and get and uh, get some extra damage on the floor. And, and I'm probably going to die here, um, as you can see, which isn't the most efficient use of my lives because obviously I died once already on this level. There, there's, yeah, there's no reason. It's inexcusable to die twice on club. You, you don't have to die twice at the club like me. Trust me. You can you can get through this probably without dying once. But I I went through with it because I was thinking, okay, if I'm 22 with the museum, I felt like I could beat the museum without dying at all, and I also felt like I can beat the tower without dying at all. That's what I felt. So I was like, yeah, no big deal, right? Um, yeah, I was like, no big deal because. You know, I didn't have the greatest start as far as managing my lives, but I was like, yeah, museum and tower, I can definitely do better. But don't be like me. Just keep keep doing the club until you can get it down to one death, zero deaths, if possible. Because the 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 chick that I died to earlier with the uh, with the stick. Yeah, that could have been a, 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 a an avoidable death. As far as Sean, Sean is a little bit like I said. It's it's really his second phase because it's at least for me it's hard to predict those um those lows. So that's really the only thing that makes it hard um at uh be beating him. All right, so now we're at the museum and we're just beating these two bozos up at the beginning. Now, I don't think I have incre increased weapon durability at this point. I don't recommend using um, any shrines to increase weapon damage. I feel like that's that's kind of a, kind of a waste. Um, there's a guy right around this corner. If you hit him immediately, then... Yeah, you can just take him down. And there's this guy. Just avoid those attacks. 
like I said before, you can hold square to do that fury attack and then, yeah, take this guy down. There's a bunch of items in here, in here you can like throw at these dudes. It's, that's what I like to do. I just like to throw. You know, they're there, so why not, you know, make use of them. And if you have a weapon, the museum, I think, has the most weapons in the game. Like everybody has a weapon. There's just weapons, you know, lying left and right on the floor. So don't be afraid if you need to, to like, just, you know, use these weapons crazy, throw them. If you if you have a, have a weapon that's about to um, break, just throw it. Oh, by the way, Weapon Mastery. Weapon Mastery is a the unlock that allows you to use a weapon until it completely breaks, right? Because weapons have like two stages in which they um, pretty much become, you know, after you use it for a while, it becomes broken. But this... Uh, that upgrade allows you to use it until it's like fully broken. So you get a lot more use out of it. Okay, so the the best way to tackle the museum is to get all three. Well, get two of the shrines, right? Get two of the shrines and then use the elevator to take you to take you directly to the boss and then the third shrine will be right there because otherwise what you would have to do is you have to go up to the fourth floor and then the fourth uh when you you know the fourth floor you jump over uh the railing it's going to take you to that um I don't know that that other part of the the stage this this little other world that you get transported to the enemies down there they can be troublesome you can get through it without dying you got a couple of those uh chicks with the high platform shoes to deal with honestly you don't there's no there's no reason to do it unless you wanted xp um or something else but there's honestly no reason to go down there there's there's nothing down there except a whole bunch of enemies that will probably that can possibly take your life so once again you just uh you get the dragon shrines from here in the actual museum, and then you uh, then you go in the elevator. And there's an elevator. You know you can get in the elevator on any floor of the museum. I like to use that move a lot. That move is the uh, what what move is that? That kick. It's the, it's the spin hook kick, I believe it is, right? So that's triangle, triangle, and then you delay it for a second and then press triangle again. And that's that move is really good because it can hit multiple enemies. That's like, uh, that move is also good for crowd control, right? You have to time it right because, you know, it, 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 there is since there's a delay, there is a time for uh, enemies to attack you. So just... Make sure the spacing is right if you're going to do that move. But it's really good because it's it's a roundhouse kick that could, uh, you know, take down multiple enemies. And I believe the combination square, 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 triangle is also like uh, pretty much a punch, punch, roundhouse kick combo. It's insane because once again, when I first when you first play this game, you're struggling to remember what all of these buttons do. And now for me. It's just in my head. I don't even got to think about it. I just, I just do it. Um, this chick, she's one of those chicks that goes low. So you just kind of got to avoid, avoid the low. Um, I recommend doing a sweep kick if you, a sweep focus if you have it right at the beginning to get the weapon out of their hand. That's another thing. When you, whenever you're going against enemies that um, have weapons, it's best to do a move like a sweep to get the weapon out of their hands because the weapons obviously do extra damage and you don't want to take possibly, you know, take that extra damage. So get the you do whatever you can to get the weapons out their hand. That's that's the first thing. So I kill her um, and then I go up to the top, the fourth floor, because there's a dragon shrine. Right, so on what was that the second floor when I went through the room, beat up them like them five dudes with that little art exhibit spinning around. That was the first dragon shrine. Now, the second dragon shrine 
is right here at the top. And that little portal takes you to the other enemies. Uh, in that, in that, uh, where it transports you to the um, other stage, which is a cool looking stage, by the way. But we don't need to do that. So we're just gonna take the elevator, and it's gonna take us directly to the boss. All right, so this boss is uh, Kuroki. Now her her phases aren't hard, honestly, right? I think I do die here once. I think I do. So here's how here's how I play her for her first phase. It's a little bit slow. It takes a little bit of a time, a, li a little time, um, but this is how I know how to do it. Those little dancing attacks, you know, the you know, this these fluid attacks that she has. Some people can actually dodge them really well. I never even learned to like really uh, attack uh dodge those. Uh what I do is I pretty much get in proximity of her and she does this ender which leaves her open. I just keep waiting until she does the, the the enders that I know how to punish. And then I keep doing that over and over again. And by the way, having a weapon, a stick, um, does help with this part since it does like more damage, more structure damage and all that. So if you can come here with a weapon, um, which you should be able to do, even if it's not a stick, you know, it should be a bat or a knife. You should be able to do that because there's weapons all over the museum. And you're uh, you're going from the museum straight to her, so you should have a weapon. So yeah, I pretty much keep my distance. I back up. Um, her moves are very telegraphed when she's going to do the, the the unsafe moves that I know how to how to handle. See, she's about to go low. You you avoid low, move in, you hit her. And then she also I don't I don't know if she did it this when I was playing when I when I beat her this time. But after that move, that where she glows red, that leaves her open. Sometimes she does this move where she lunges forward, and she also, uh, and that also leaves her open. And you just have to like uh, weave that, and um, that could easily be punished. This can be punished also if I time it. I didn't time it right then, right there. But you kind of gotta like know when the last hit is coming and avoid that. And, and um, that one right there. Yeah, sometimes she does that if you don't attack her quick enough and you just have to, uh, you know, dodge that and that leaves her open to attack. Yep, and I just wait for that. Did Okay, I dodged that one a little bit early. You have to dodge that late. Yeah, it takes a little bit more time this way, but I think it's also safer this way if you don't want to learn, you know, her attack patterns. I think it's like high, high, low, high. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm going to be real with you. I'm like, yeah, no, that, that was like a high, low, high, low, it seemed to be. But I'm like, Listen, I ain't, I ain't about to learn all that. I'm just going to I'm just going to avoid them. You know, sometimes, sometimes the best strategy is to not be there at all. You know, the, the best way to get hit, the best way to avoid getting hit is just not be there. And as you can see, her structure is, is up there. So about to go to this next phase. Skip that. So this phase is honestly... It, it, you know, you can get through this a lot faster. You can block these first few hits and you just have to dodge um, the charged up double kick that she does. Dodge that a little bit late and then you punish. You can you can weave um, all uh, 
those first few moves. And this move, that's the move you really got to look out for, right? That You got to get the timing of that. She pretty much, you have to like weave that two seconds before it actually comes out or two seconds before you think it's gonna come out because it comes out really fast and uh, you probably won't be able to react to it properly. So when you see her like glowing red, that's when that's when you do it. And by the way, you can actually ca catch her kunais. You can catch her kunais when she throws them and, and throw it back at her as long as you have the, uh, the ability unlocked to do it. I don't remember the, exactly what the ability is called, uh, but it, you know, it's it's pretty cheap. I think it's like 500 to permanent, per, uh, you know, like 2,500 to permanently unlock it, but it's like 500 to unlock it once. Um, I don't do it here, even though I have the move unlocked, because sometimes my timing to catch it is a little bit off. And if your timing is off, then you're gonna take unnecessary damage. So the kunai's, if you can catch them consistently and throw it back at her, it does good damage. But if you don't wanna risk it, just you know just avoid them and as you can see she's another one in in this phase you in this phase you avoid her a lot at least the way i play i avoid her a lot more um in the second phase so my my meter builds and i'm able to sweep her a lot and then she's done Oh, and so I didn't die. It, it, it's so weird. Like, I died. I didn't die in the club. I didn't die in squats at all. I died twice in the club, which is insane. I shouldn't have done that. And then I'm able to get through this entire part, uh, this entire um, third stage without dying. Once again, I did not do all of these on my first attempt. Like, the squat, the squats, I'm pretty sure, like, that maybe took me... You know, the squats is easy. You might make a few mistakes here and there and end up dying. But I think without uh, I can get through the squats like in one or two tries without dying. The club, a little bit more, you know, difficult, but it's it's definitely attainable without dying. Um, the museum, definitely. Uh, the museum actually took me a, a few times to beat without dying only because I was going to that being uh, I was going to that other stage where you go on the fourth floor and then you're transported. So that took me a while to figure out, hey, why am I doing that? I can just get the two shrines and then go on the elevator. So now this stage, the tower, this took me, oh man, this, I still died here, right? But I died, um, I died once to the boss, which is uh, Jin Feng. And honestly, that could have been avoided because my, my timing with hers is, is is was off. Because honestly, I think she's actually I think she, aside from the first boss, I think she might be the easiest one. Honestly, but sometimes her timing, if if your timing is off with her, then you know it's just a you just go down this spiral where you're not not avoiding anything properly and your timing is off. But I honestly think she. She's like probably the second easiest boss. So this, yeah, the reason I, I died to the boss, but oh man, like this level, there there were just certain um, enemies on this level that make it that make it very hard to even get to her without dying. They have a couple of brutes. They have a couple of brutes in in, in this um, that makes it annoying. And then there's like these powered up enemies. Once you get off the elevator in the in the, in the next section, that makes it a, a bit annoying because you need you absolutely need your your health. You need to keep your health up. Um, and then down in the down, you know, when you get transported to the next part of the level, uh, down in the I don't I don't even know what the the hell you call it the dungeons or the mines whatever whatever the hell it is the catacombs there's a um there's a few enemies down there that make it really difficult because there's like three there's like two parts where they throw uh, a bunch of enemies at you um 
and it's it's really the combination of enemies that that make it a little bit difficult. They have those. There's this part where they have the the chick with the high platform shoes. I wish I knew the actual you know proper name for these enemy archetypes. The high platform shoe shoe uh, chicks, and then they have the actual brute. One of the uh, not the fat brutes, but one of those brolic dudes. And the combination of those two is super annoying. Yeah, that see that move that move is, is has gotten me so many times. That move is kind of broken. It does so much damage and, and so much and a good amount of structure damage. Um It's it's yeah, you, you it's best to block that. If you if you miss that, I think it even stuns you if you if you if you don't block or avoid it properly. That move sucks, and and it has so much range. They can hit you from so far with that move. If you and and they pretty much do it anytime there's an object in front of them that they can jump over. So anytime you have that type of enemy around you, right, and there's an object they can jump over, make sure you're very far away. Because there's been times where I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm far enough that she won't jump over this, this object, this desk, and still be able to hit me. And was still able to hit me. So get as far as possible uh, from them when they have something, uh, an object between them that they can vault over. This part can be a little bit annoying. I've, I've died here. Um... A lot of times because these two chicks are powered up and there's been some there's been a few times where also like one of the other regular enemies get powered up so and, and here's a tip here's another tip right some and you'll experience this sometimes when you go for a takedown the enemy will avoid it they'll counter it and then they'll become like souped up or whatever they'll become like stronger if you but that only happens if you go for the actual takedown. If you just do a regular attack and kill them off, then they can't then they can't become souped up. So if you don't want to chance it, if you don't want to take the chance of an enemy be uh become uh coming back more powerful after the you attempt a takedown, don't try the takedown. Don't attempt it. Just just kill them off. Any other time, yeah, I would say, you know, definitely go uh, for a takedown. This room also. So after that last room, which with a bunch of enemies, you know, that can kill you because they throw a lot at you. Then they throw you in this room with that brawlic dude. And then the, there's, there's two regular enemies. You can kill them. Um, but then this chick is also like souped up yeah the combination of them can just be very annoying so getting through this part uh, and you see they're they're literally just cornering me that and that's the worst when they when they just corner you and you pretty much can't get out you can't dodge out there's a move um where if you punch an enemy and then and then dodge in the direction of them it'll it'll uh switch places it'll switch places so that, that's very useful when you're getting stuck in a crowd and i and i use that sometimes and obviously you can throw you can throw stunned enemies and i just use an emergency focus kick because he was about to kill me right there you can also throw enemies and obviously i don't i don't utilize it a lot i just i don't know i just, I just don't but It, it can be useful for also crowd control. So there's a broom right there before you get on this part. Um, this is where you're going to jump down into the elevator and um, you're pretty much going to have to fight one of those uh, fat brutes. And uh, and then there's two more regular enemies that are going to climb up uh, on top of the elevator with you. Also, don't be don't be afraid to like poke enemies and then back off, right? You don't 
obviously if you're if you're watching uh this i i would assume you're far enough to understand that this game is anti button mash right they've designed this game that if you button mash you're gonna get destroyed because the ai is really good and, and 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 they're aggressive so button mashing will not help you you have to be precise you have to be accurate you have to be deliberate with your moves Some other moves I don't think I mentioned yet, the the um the push kick, that's one of the moves that can push enemies away. It's square, square, triangle. That'll push enemies in, in, into walls also. Um, I think I had mentioned uh, forward, forward, square. That's a move that'll push enemies away, push them into walls and push them into other enemies and stuff like that. And um, yeah, and, and of course you got your, uh, you know, your, you know, the basic attacks, you know, just Four, four squares, four triangle. The move, the the four triangle moves, uh, which is just uh, four heavy attacks in a row. That's useful also. Um, it's that's that's very useful because it knocks enemies to the ground, and, and a lot of times it'll just completely, um, it'll just completely stun them and, and put them in in a in a takedown. But when you have a lot of enemies on you. You should probably uh, use, the, you know, the light attacks a little bit more because the, the heavy attacks take a little bit more time to come out. You know, the animation, the frames are a, are a little bit longer. So you want to kind of just, you know, poke at them, a whole bunch of short moves, focus on weaving. Um, you know, don't, when you got too many en enemies around you, probably don't do the moves that take really long to come out. So this is one of the chicks, once again, high platform shoes that does all those, you know, acrobatic spinning moves. And um, you're gonna see me just spam duck punch. That duck strike right there, wait for it, back off, duck strike, just interrupts her moves. And this works on, this. like I said, this works on a lot of enemies. And then you could just take her down, you can go into, um, you can go into a, a sweep. And that's, that's the, uh, that's the move I was telling you about that I like to use a lot to poke at enemies, especially if their if their structure is high and you don't want to get too close or engage them. That's the snap kick, so you just keep on poking at them. Also, I, I think I mentioned the um the the charged backs backhand charged back fist. I use that, but not not as often because. You can use that on ag aggressive enemies that are just gonna run right, run right into you, right? You shouldn't use it on enemies that have a long reach. This part is really hard, by the way, because this is the this is the part I was talking about where they just put you in this room with a bunch of enemies and the enemy combination sucks. So he so now he's powered up. She's a high platform shoe chick, and that dude is just a. a a, a muscular brute so this this I was like oh god I'm gonna this is the worst possible scenario so this is one of those parts where it would have been better if I killed that dude off and not tried to do an execution and I'm just you know picking my spots avoiding And uh, yeah, a lot of these, you know, like the duck strike, you can cancel out of it. So if you if you miss, you can all, you know, you could just poke and, and back out like like what I'm doing. I'm doing that with the uh, with, with the snap kick also trying to be safe. Yeah, but what I was saying with the with the um, the charge back fist is I use it for regular enemies that that like to just charge directly at you and they don't have like any long range attack because then when you hold the charge back fist and then when you let go of it they'll just run right into it and it'll stun them 
But for charge back fists, probably wouldn't work that well on like the platform shoes chicks because you know they have long reach and they're acrobatic and they're doing all this flying around it wouldn't work real good on them and um yeah there's certain enemies that just wouldn't work well on another move that i use a lot oh by the way so this is this is where <laughs> environmental master comes in i'm literally just going to be spamming her with um with items just kicking them at her you know waiting for her to leave herself open because she's about to do an attack i back up and just because yes like her 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 pattern isn't hard but once again i'm not trying to take a whole bunch of chances so i'm literally just spamming her with with moves i'm not trying to take no chances i've been through this i think like i said it took me like probably 30 times to get through this part without dying before I get to the boss. So at this point, I wasn't taking no chances. But yeah, as I was saying, like Duck Strike and I think Crotch Punch are like a great combination um, because pretty much like just like Duck Strike, it's another move that interrupts interrupts enemies while they're in the middle of of doing doing a move you know crotch punch is uh forward forward square um and pretty much pretty much i think it's the same thing he ducks and he just punches an enemy enemy in in, in the crotch uh you know and it, it'll like break whatever animation that they're in All right, so I'm 22. About to fight her. So with her, you actually want to close the disc. She's a zoner, right? She's in a, in a fighting in a fighting game. We would refer to her as a zoner. So you actually want to be close, and you want to uh, just be able to react to her attacks. But even when she pushes you away, first thing you should be trying to to get right in on her as soon as possible and my, like i said and she does a spider-man thing where she tries to get away from you once again because she's a zoner so what she did just now that was the easiest combo to predict right and i'm gonna die because like i said my timing was just off she also does that move which le leaves her open when she does that when she does that backflip she's gonna uh, also throw her weapon And that move, that's where she, uh, where she does an attack in quick, in quick succession, right? So boom, that wasn't it, but yeah, she, um, she throws it, boom, and then she goes again, boom. You should avoid very quickly after the first move because the second move is going to come out a lot faster than you expect. I die right there. If you get hit on the floor, get up immediately. Get up immediately, because obviously she's a zoner. She's not going to get near you. She's not one of those enemies that you can trip up. So if if you get hit on the floor, get up immediately. So you can avoid that extra damage. And her second phase is honestly not that... Oh, she did, she, she did a little scorpion move right there. Um, her her second phase is honestly not that drastically different than her first. I don't really think you have to play it very differently. It's it's. I think it's honestly the same thing. With She's maybe a little bit faster, a little bit more aggressive. Yeah, that move... That... That move she did, you really only have to worry about the, the ender. You don't gotta worry about avoiding the first the first two. Just worry about the last move. There, there's a lot of these moves. I know I may not be doing the best job at describing it in the moment. 
how to take how to take on these bosses but people have by the way there are obviously videos up i'm sure of people explaining um frame by frame and you know attack by attack how to beat all of these bosses so obviously i'm not doing the best the best job but um like i said i'm doing this in the moment i i know people have done like uh slow-mo videos to explain uh, all the bosses move sets and everything like that so this isn't necessarily a boss guide this is obviously more about just how i managed to do this under age 25. see i got it right there you know after being off balance and off rhythm so many times finally got it right there boom yeah that that combo right there that's the easiest one of hers to handle and predict so if you get that one every time then you'll probably be in in fine shape okay so now we're at the sanctuary i think and i'm age 23 which means that I can I can possibly die twice and beat uh and beat Yang. Obviously you you don't want to die if you're age 23 and you get here, you don't want to die um uh in in the in the level, of course. If you die in the level and you're age 23, you honestly well, might as well might as well restart. And Yang Yang, I didn't die in the first phase of Yang. I died in the second phase and was still able to beat him because um and even if even if you die in the first phase, you still have a chance because the death counter resets. Right? So I'm 23. I die in the first if I die in the first phase, then I'm 24. Right? Then I get to the second phase. If I die again, I'm 25. So as long as I beat him while I'm 25, then you still get the trophy because it's 25 and under. So technically you have two lives to beat Yang if you're age, uh, if you're age 23 starting at the sanctuary like me. But once again, much easier if you do it while at age 22. And if you manage to get here somehow at 21 or 20, then it's a breeze. You could die a bunch of times practically and you'll be fine. So the shrines at now are not really important anymore, right? If you man, if you manage to uh, do the shrines like I did, if you manage to upgrade the parry twice, um, uh, twice th throughout this uh, this playthrough, then you're in better shape than I do. I only managed to upgrade the parry once, and even though you probably won't even parry Sean uh, Yang that that much. It still helps to uh, you know increase his um, damage to his uh, his structure a lot more. So the there's one dragon statue in in that cafeteria, which is where I was just at, and then I came directly out here, obviously because I've beaten the stage already. So I have the key to come directly into the courtyard. There is a bunch of enemies if you go if you go all the way through it and there is a dragon statue um th uh that way also but you don't need it it's not it's not going to make a difference um it, it's just not going to make a difference and it's not really going to help you uh beat yang so it's it's pointless it's best to just go in the cafeteria get in the courtyard beat these dudes up go directly go directly to uh to yang And yet and Yang is a bit different. He he's different than all the other bosses in a way that actually makes him easier. And uh I'll talk about that when when I get to him. So this dude up here who's got the stick, I just throw something at him. You can sweet you know, do a sliding kick, get some damage at him. You know, throw that at him. And there's a there's a bunch of um you know, if you happen to be at low health here, he goes low, by the way. You know, just block the first few hits and then look out for the low. The 
you know, if you happen to be weak, you can go back downstairs uh, where all the other enemies were and they dropped a whole bunch of weapons and you could just, if you have environmental mastery, well, not, yeah, environmental mastery, yeah, you can just spam this guy with, uh, by throwing a whole bunch of weapons at him. All right, so as I said, here's the uh, second shrine, because um, we skipped the second, uh, the, well, that's the third shrine. We skipped the second shrine because we don't really need it. And so, like I said, this took, th what, how many times did this take me to do? This took, this actually took me less times than, than the tower. I think I, I managed to do this in about 15 tries. And sometimes I took the staff with me, sometimes I didn't. I actually think it's better without the staff, right? Because for, I think this, this is all, this beating Yang is all rhythm based. Well, all, you know, all the bosses are rhythm based, but especially Yang, right? And I think using the, the stick, I, I felt like he did different moves when I used the staff, right? I, I felt like he used, he did different moves on me when I was using the staff. And I feel like using the staff also threw me off rhythm a bit. Uh, but if you are going to use a weapon or use a staff, I recommend using the light attacks because the heavy attacks uh, see, uh, seem to come out a little bit slower. So here's the key with Yang. You can, unlike the other bosses in Sifu, you can actually spam a void for a lot of his moves. I'm not timing these. This, these, this is all just spamming. Spamming a void. Anytime he comes, he comes in, spam a void. That, that's all spamming. That's that's not that's not me timing anything. You, you so like I said, you can't do that with all the other enemies because the other the other enemies you spam avoid, you're still gonna get hit. But because of the pace of his attacks, how fast he does it, you you can spam avoid. So Yang also does this thing where he'll back off and he won't attack. So you can't you can actually um you can actually taunt in this game, by the way, by pressing the right directional button, and that'll get him to come at you. But the best thing to do, like right there, right? So when he doesn't, when he doesn't attack and he just stands there, go go towards him, do one attack, back off, and then and then avoid. That's what I do every single time, and it work and it works. Go at him. No, oh, that's a punish. Okay, let me see. So you see, okay, he won't attack. Boom, back off. Just avoid. So it's attack, dodge backwards, avoid. Every single time. That's how you deal with that's how you deal with him not pushing, you know, not pushing. And then anytime you also, anytime you see him jump back, he does this move where he jumps back really far. When he does that. No, he's about to do a sliding kick. Boom, right there. Anytime he jumps back like that, a sliding kick is most likely coming. And just be ready to punish that. This is this is all just spamming. Oh, and by the way, so he does this move where he does like a, a you know, like a flurry of attacks where like these really fast punches when he, you know he's gonna do that because he sidesteps to like the right or the left. I think it's usually to the right. I'm not, I think he definitely did it, but um, I think I forgot to mention it when he actually did it. But yeah, you know he's gonna do it when he sidesteps to the right or the left. And when he does that, Try harder. that's, um, you, you just spam, you just spam, um, avoid, and then, and then you punish. Sometimes he does it, see, sometimes he does it twice in, in the row, by the way. He'll, uh, he'll do, he'll do the fury of attacks, dodge to the right, do another fury of attacks. Okay, now we're on the second phase. Didn't die in the first phase. So he's similar, but he also does lows in this, in, in this phase, which, once again, you have to ground counter, and, so, but sometimes you won't get a follow-up. Sometimes you won't get a uh, be able to, to get a follow up. It's I don't know. It seems to be random sometimes. Now, just like I told you in the first phase, where he jumps back and then does a running slide kick, 
in this in this phase when he jumps back he's gonna do this three hit fierce attack so that's the only difference when he when he jumps back get ready for that right there and then you just spam avoid it's gonna be three hits you spam that then then you punish that's the main thing you got to worry about because i think that does the, the most damage and then sometimes he does that that like two hit that two hit combo that two hit string once again that's that's not me anticipating that or even timing that that's just spamming that's just spamming a void and see he, he jumped i wasn't ready right there so i I'm, I'm close to getting him at about half this is gonna be close by the way so there's sometimes where your your reaction may be a little bit slow because you know you're not sure if you got the avoid or not and so I get killed right there. Um, so now I can't die, right? Because now my, my, wait, what is, what was my death count? I think my death count, yeah, my death counter is now at two and I'm 24. So if I die right here, then I'm going to be 26. So I can't die here. I have to finish him off like this. I got to clutch this. Clutch jeans about to kick in. Yeah, sometimes there, there's times where you may uh, feel like, okay, I avoided, but I'm late to reaction. Um, when that happens, it might be better you do a light attack because light attacks come out faster. Oh, and by the way, he has a he has a, a counter, right, in this phase. And he did it like maybe 30 seconds ago where he'll just stand there and he'll make a noise do not attack him when he does when he goes in, in in that counter pose because what he'll do if you attack him he will just he's always going to counter it 100 percent of the time he's going to hit you he's going to do high damage and you're going to be stunned so when you see him just pose and he puts his ar arms up like he's uh you know like he's just waiting for you and he makes a sound do not attack him do not attack him so as you can see i got no life left i got punched into the wall the cam the camera is against me because you know the camera can be your worst enemy in this game sometimes i and i didn't avoid that right i'm sweating okay every every part of my body is sweating i man i managed to hold hold my composure game's done beat it under 25. And I got a little bit nervous because um, this trophy takes a minute to pop, but it does pop at the end. And there we have it. Scareless, that's for beating the game under 50. And that's for under 25. So yeah, there you have it. Thanks for watching, y'all. Let me know if you have any questions, obviously, comment section. I'm out of here. Peace.